Welcome to my floss tube, everybody. Greetings. I hope everybody is staying well. I know it seems like more and more people are getting sick, but hopefully all of us are holding in there and staying self-quarantined as much as possible, but it's no fun, is it, to be stuck at home? I know that we've talked about how um, we have all built up a stash. It shouldn't be that big of a problem to keep up busy, but for those who crave other um, entertainment or other people being around them, it's a little rough. It's a little rough. So I hope you all are staying safe. Um, I keep looking over this direction because I hear things and sometimes it's a bird um, or some other things. So um, sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to be having several different things going on with this video today. Um, a few different ways of showing stuff. I think... I was watching um, Pony Patcher Stitcher um, and she did something different when she was showing her whips. I'm like, I really like that because um, you've got two, two reasons. You don't have to worry about light shining behind your stitch project and trying to cover that up. You also can control it laying down instead of holding it up um, and having it flop over and whatever else. Um, it just seemed like yeah, I don't have to, I'm not showing my face while I'm doing it, but you've got a little bit more control over it. And that was the other thing is usually when you're holding up, you're trying to peek around the fabric or whatever you're holding to see what the camera is doing. Sorry, I'm outside so you can hear the kids as well. Um, so there's a lot of things that are going on with why I thought, oh, maybe that'd be easier and a little nicer to show it that way. So when I show my whips and things, then that's going to be what's, what's going on. Um... So with that, that's our neighbor. For whatever reason, there is a bird sitting on the side mirror of this guy's truck. And it won't go away. And it just sits there and it flaps around. And I think it's probably seeing its reflection and thinking there's another bird there. But yeah, it will not go away. So this little kid is yelling at the bird that's sitting on the mirror. Anyway, with that, uh, let's hop to some other things that are going on, the whips and all that, and uh, we'll come back and talk about some other things too. Okay, so here is um, my whips, and we'll get to haul in a minute. When I last left you for my last video, I think I had just needed to switch over to this. I'm not 100% sure about that, but this is what I worked on for 10 days. And this is, I believe, a Russian pattern. Really, really cute. And this is how much I've gotten done for it. Um, as you can see, when I put my Q-snap on here, it's eight inches, so it's just wide enough that it makes it hard to get to these edges over here. So over here is gonna be a handle, and over here is gonna be a handle. I just can't, I couldn't really get those finished up because it was, you know, it was getting hard to reach to those parts, even though I kind of made it work a little bit. Um, teacup that's sitting sideways here, teacup that's sitting a little sideways here, and this one's going to be pretty flat because um, below this is where the stacked saucers will be. So you can see this is the one that is right here. Um, so it'll, it'll sit flat. The other ones will all be tilted to some degree and angles um, as they sit inside each other. So it's coming along. It's going real pretty. Um, I got quite a bit done because I think all I had done was like this area here before. So I worked, finished all that other area in those 10 days. And I will show you now what I have moved on to because it has been... As I mentioned, those 10 days, and now I need to do something else in order to keep on my schedule. So I am moving on to this, which is the Apple Blossom Sampler. Very cute. It's a quick, it's going pretty quickly, because um, it's not very wide, so it doesn't take a long time to get, you know, width done. Um, I did have to frog a bit at one point. Um, this 
branch right here that runs up through here and then the branches up here because when I originally did it I got down to here and the next step for this part right here on the brown I had stitched over these two so I'll get a little closer I'd stitched it over these two so it's like I jumped over here instead so it would have it covered up this part here that you had to cross over for the G and so everything was off by a couple of stitches so not only did it crop cover this up but it would have run through this part right here um, it just would have all been a big hot mess if I left it <laughs> I'm all for leaving it if it's not gonna matter and it's okay um, not so much if <laughs> It blocks something I can't fix and it's not going to work at all. Um, so I still have, for the part that's stitched, I still need to do the, the beak on the bird, but that's um, it's a long stitch and I'm going to wait until I finish the regular stitching. His eye is in there. It's, um, it's like a charcoal color, so it's really hard to tell the difference between the regular, the brown and the eye. That's okay. The beak, I believe, is going to be the same as the feet, so it'll show up. Then in this bunch, of this flower, the center flower, and inside this G, there's some specialty stitches. So I am going to wait on those. I'll come back and get to that as well. But everything else is looking really pretty. Um, the one thing I did do different is the cream, this white creamy color. I did do this with two threads instead of one. Everything else is one thread. And the reason I did that is that these, these are all in one, but they kind of blend into the fabric a little better so they don't show off kind of the sparseness of the stitch. So I'll get, oh, let's see how close I can get. I mean, you can see pretty well. It's, it's a little sparse and you can kind of see that, but when you do it with the white, it contrasts with that fabric so much that it really stands out a lot. So I went ahead and used two threads when I stitch with that color, just so it stands out a little better and it's not like, wow, did you forget something there? It doesn't look quite finished. So there is what I have been working on with this. A little side pattern that I have been working on. Um, this is something that I take when I need something quick to do or something small. Um, I mean, not necessarily quick, but um, it, it's easy to transport. And that's these. <coughs> Sorry about that. The little tea balls. I am working on a large one. If you've gotten this pattern or seen anything about it, you know that there are patterns for small size and, and um, large size tea balls. And I am working on the, um, the larger one. I'm actually doing this pattern here. And this is what I have gotten so far. I need to finish uh, a little bit more of the interior of that star, that stitching across. And then I have some vines to do around to connect the flowers. And inside each of the flowers is also that creamy white. Um, there's to you, there's one stitch in all of them, and that requires that color. Um, in case you do want to do this and haven't started it yet, if you know, I mean, if you think about it, when we're cross-stitching, we're cross-stitching and everything is very vertical and horizontal and we got those nice boxes well with this so this would be how it sits straight up and down if i were to hold it and dangle it and you should notice it's a little off center that's because the grid's off center so i had tilted a little bit in order to get those vertical and horizontal lines so run into that also you notice at the corner there that red flower is a little elongated every corner is like that and it just does that because of the nature of this mesh and how it's curved around i don't care it's fine to me one thing i don't think i will do necessarily because for one i just i don't feel like i need to do it but also because i'm not sure how the mesh is going to act now that i'm getting all the way around this corner is if you notice it does have this 
band around it besides. So I've got the greenery that links all the flowers, the vine, and then it's got a yellow band with little triangles on the corners. I don't think I'm going to do that band um, just because I don't think it needs it. So, um, so yeah, it's coming along. As you notice, I've got my needle stuffed in there because I'm still stitching. So it's a nice, it's a nice place to store it, but it does want to fall through the mesh a little bit. <laughs> um, so I have to be careful when I pick it up. I don't stab myself, but yeah, it's coming along. I really, it's different. The, you know, when you're stitching on fabric, the fabric will kind of hold the needle in place a little bit when you need to grab it from the other side. This mesh doesn't do that. Not so much. <laughs> so it's a little bit more different. And there's Penelope. Um, it's a little different to work with in that respect as well. All right, let's get on to some haul. Put those things over there. The first one that I have, um, or first two, are older patterns. It's not anything new that was released. It was just in my bag at Acorns and Threads, and I promptly had forgotten about them. <laughs> So when I was there shopping for market, they handed them to me. I'm like, oh, yeah. So I better buy those. Um, the first one is Harvest Delivery. Very cute. I love the horse. I have the Summer Delivery. The horse, I love it. The wagons are very nice, too. The horse just really gets me. And the other one is, this is the um, Scissor Roll. And this is the Autumn one. Um... So I'll zoom in a little closer, you can see. So we got our autumn one. Uh, I'm not sure if I have the mouse, but um, probably do, because I have a lot of the mice. Um, Hubby just walked in, I'm sure he doesn't want to be on camera. Nope. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, like I said, I have the summer and the spring one. I don't know if they have a winter one or not. Don't know about that. I need to check on that because it would be nice to have all four seasons. So there's that. Now, these ones are the haul from Market. I don't have that much, but it's... I'm going to show you what I got. Um, Jenny's House. Not that I watch everybody's video, but I haven't seen this one. So I don't know if it's just not something somebody was interested in. Um, I found the tree very interesting. It looks a little prickly to me, but um, just the way they the branches but it's very I just it's unique um, love the flowers also love this birdhouse over here really cool then the next one I got which you all have seen by the way he ran creeping out of here my husband so that I wouldn't accidentally film him yeah I wouldn't do that so anyway um I'm sure you all have seen this. I got both patterns because they do um, go together. They were designed by two different designers, but they were designed in um, conjunction with each other so that they would work together with each other. As you notice, the pattern around here fits with this around here. You've got two birds, even though they're different. And um, the saying works well together as, you know, a token from my friend, from my heart to your heart or hand, excuse me. So um, you can stitch this separate or you could stitch them as one piece. Um, they're meant to be done either way. So I really, really like that. It's lovely, lovely, lovely. Then I have one more big thing to show you. Um, let me see if I can find the tag for this so you can see. So this is an Ada. I don't typically do Ada. It's a softer one. It's not really, really stiff. Um, but it's the title from Picture This Plus. It's just gorgeous. I love the um, color of it. So I like the shade, but I also like the modeling on it. Just It's so pretty. In fact, I'll, I can open it a little bit more so you can see more of it. It's really, really pretty. But I got that because I want to stitch these on it so this designer when i was asking um while i was there they don't typically have this designer there 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 excuse me my tongue get my tongue out of the way um and i didn't think so i hadn't seen these before so i wasn't sure so i wanted to go ahead and get all the patterns that i did want 
um, even though it's a larger amount than I would normally buy at one time. There was a total of eight of these patterns, but I only got six. Um, I only saw seven of them, so there might have been one hiding somewhere. But the seventh one I saw was much plainer, looked like a normal house, so it wasn't anything special, and so I didn't get that one. And I didn't know what the eighth one one was. Because I didn't know what it was, and I had an even number because I've got six, and I'm going to stitch them all on this one you know, as one piece, so they'll all be on here. Um, I just decided to stay with the six and not worry about having an odd one that I would have to fit in somewhere. So there's that one. There's that one. There's that. There's that one. There's that one. And the last one, little mushroom. So I'll spread these so that you can kind of see them all together. I'll kind of zoom up a little bit. So you can see them all. They're very cute. I love fairy gardens. So this will look very nice, um, not only on the material, but uh, just so cute. Cute and whimsical. Um, they did have the fabric that is called for here while I was there. It's darker than the fabric I got. And it's just plain, it's, it doesn't have any modeling on it. Um, but I really like the color that I got. I liked it better. And so I had pulled the threads for one of these houses, I don't know which one it was, um, but considering they're fairly similar in their color and they might require all the same colors, I didn't look that closely. Um, I pulled the colors, they're all DMC, and I stuck them on the fabric, and they look all right. They look fine. So it's not like I'm going to have something really funky and weird on that fabric that I don't, I'm not going to like. So there we are with that. It's all of the haul that I got from Market. Um, I typically don't buy a ton um, because, for one thing, usually you can reorder um something if you really really see something you like uh, so it's not like it's going to disappear usually and I can get it later so there's just a couple of things that I really thought I wanted to have right now I don't know when I'm going to get to stitching them because as y'all know I have a year's worth of stitching to do um, so unless I break that you know the t-balls weren't part of my thing either in my year of stitching stuff but that's something I really only work on about once a week um, so it's not like I work on it a lot, and it's not something that has to be done right away. Obviously, it's not Christmas time. So when I get to these, it's either going to have to wait until next year, or um, I kind of crack them out and start working on them anyway. <laughs> I don't know. You know, our years and our days fly by so fast that it won't surprise me if it's not until next year that I get to it. But, you know, it's the way it is. It's the way things happen. So hopefully you all are... Having fun with your, all your stitching. So now that the weather is getting nice, there's my lovely yard. Yay. Um, if you don't remember or if you didn't watch videos, I covered my whole black backyard with plastic where I didn't plant the new grass so that I would not have the weed mess that I had last year. But, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. And no, I'm not sick. Um, the one thing I did do actually yesterday was plant a tree after I cut down like six of them or one of them fell down um, actually two of them fell down um, and I'm finally starting to get my landscaping done I've planted my tree it's pretty it's already starting to bloom a little bit and see the little pink flowers all over Let's see if I can get one up real close here we go so pretty so cute um in case you want to know what kind this was it is a newport flowering plum okay um it i think when i read about it it uh would only get 15 to 20 feet tall so it's not going to get enormous i mean that sounds big but it's not like 
that tree way back there. <laughs> um, it'll provide nice shade for part of the yard and whatnot, and it's going to be really pretty. It's got the, as you saw, the flowers. Um, it will not produce fruit and drop it all over the ground. Because when you think of a plum tree, like that's going to create a mess. Well, this one does not do that. It's just ornamental. So I got that in. I got it staked. Hopefully it's staked well enough that uh, nothing, it's not going to blow over. Uh, when I got this, um, there was a place that does bare root tree sale. So I got this a little less than a week ago. And... They were phenomenal prices. They didn't have a huge, huge variety. They had quite a bit, but it wasn't like every tree you ever want. Um, so the trees like this, this ornamental ones, it was $10. $10. And that's a pretty good sized tree. I mean, that thing is already um, probably close to 10 feet tall at the very tippy top right there. So it's that's a good price. <laughs> Um, so I planted it and because it's a bare root, um, and they don't want you to like pack the soil really hard around the roots. Um, and that's partially why you have to stake it. I mean, even a brand new tree that was in a regular pot, you would probably want to stake, but, um, it just, it's going to take a little bit longer to get really firm in the ground, I think. Um, and they say that up to a year you're supposed to stake it. So it may be a little while. Um, I've got some other things. I've started moving some dirt. You can kind of see it's a little mounded, a round mound over there. Uh, I will wait on that to tell you what I'm going to do if it works out. Um, this fence, you know, a chain link fence isn't the most, you know, attractive thing to look at. But I don't mind looking at the field back here. This belongs to the church right over here. Um, I mean, I don't really care to look at all of those, but... I don't mind looking at this field and it's pretty and the kids aren't back here that often. They're, they're hardly back here. Um, but the problem that I've run into is I think the person who did landscaping and mowing and all of that has, is a different person. So what they used to do, they've got a riding mower and what they used to do was, um, shoot out the side, the clipped grass. The last person who did it, which is why I think they have somebody new, um, they don't have a shooting out the side. They've got it funneled up to the back of their mower, and it comes up high, like the seat height, where you could attach a bag and um, shoot it into the bag, and then you've collected it. <clears throat> well, they didn't put a bag. They didn't put a bag on it, and so it just shoots, and it just kind of goes everywhere just shoots out everywhere in, in the back um and it comes through the fence and right now it's not that big of a deal because i have black plastic all over and it's just falling on that but once i get this done and i have bark dust and whatever i don't want that shooting all over my landscaping uh, this was not something i had planned on having to deal with <clears throat> so i'm going to get something to put on you know basically it's going to be attached to the fence but um i i have looked into a variety of things of kind of just trying to get ideas and i think the thing i'm going to go with and hopefully it'll work <clears throat> i saw that they do sell it at like home depot and places like that it's a dense mesh um screening type of material you just attach it directly to the fence and it comes in varying lengths. Um, most of them I saw people bought 50 foot lengths and it's supposed to be about six feet high. <clears throat> so that would work. And it doesn't 100% block out what you can see on the other side, but it blocks out a lot of it. And, but the, and like I said, I don't care if I see the, the, the field here, it's to block off any grass clippings that feel they going to come into my yard um and it might provide a little bit of shade along that a little bit i don't know this is the part of the area it's the house and the yard that gets the most sun because that direction is west so the sun just hits this whole back area here all day long um this corner not as much because that tree does shade 
for a good portion of the day, even in summer. Um, so it's all of this side over here that gets the sun. So having that mesh up there might help a little bit with some shading if we needed it for any plants or something. But mostly just to keep the grass and whatever else wants to float through that fence at us off of my landscaping. Now we're going to go look at some other stuff in the front that I've done. Okay, front yard. As you can see, I still have the dirt mound, which I am slowly working on. I don't know if you can see at the very end that it's got a patch dug out, and that's what I've taken into the back for that circular area. Um, my lovely trees that are flowering out here, too. Uh, these are weeping mulberry, I believe. Um, so they're very pretty. Um, slowly getting the landscaping taken care of in here. I need to get some more bark dust for this year, and it's a constant weeding battle. I mean, I've already weeded earlier this spring, and now they're popping up again. But what I did was I planted two new rose bushes. So there's one there, and there's one over there. I took out four of them that were here. So kind of in that area, in that area, a couple more on that side. Um, I wanted less. I didn't want as many rose bushes. Plus I wanted a different color. So these are going to be more of that um, coral, orangey, yellow, really pretty color that I love. Um, so those those will be the colors I want. I won't have as many because it seemed like um, they weren't really in the position in the yard of where I wanted them. They were either too close to the grass, so when you mowed, you had to be careful not getting pricked by them. Um, they were also, I'm going to have to get this the walkway redone. As you can see, I've filled in the bigger, I mean, it just cracks and chunks off all the time because it's not very good. Um, and so I filled in the big cracks with some pea gravel so that nobody will hurt themselves. Um, so that's going to have to be done. And the roses were kind of close to this for when it does get worked on. I don't. I didn't want the plants to get damaged, but again, I only really wanted two is fine. Two rose bushes is fine because then I can put other landscaping if I feel like it, um, especially once this sidewalk thing, this walkway is done. Um, but I'm, you know, it takes for me, it takes a long time to figure out what I want to do and how I want it to look and um, get it all done right. So it's a slow progress, but it's getting there. Just as a little side note, I thought I would point out, um, you know, you got the lovely daffodils in the back. And I do have these daffodils, but they're so delicate and pretty. They're just light and airy type daffodils. And the f great thing about all this, both of these daffodils and all the other plants that I've planted here, are things that were around the yard when I started digging everything up and pretty much destroying the yard. I just replanted them and they did bloom last year, but it seems like just, you know, as anything else, they've gotten more hardy because after replanting, I wasn't sure what was going to happen and, um, more and more blooms. So I'm just, it was when these, these little light airy ones started popping up, I was like, Oh my gosh, those are so pretty. Even though I love regular daffodils. Those really just made me happy. So, um, I'm filming this on Friday. And on Thursday, so yesterday, my son says, there's something in the wall. And I'm like, what? He says, yeah, since like 4.30 at least, I've been hearing things in the wall. Well, for one thing, I'm glad you didn't hear it longer than that and didn't tell me about it. But... Grr, I don't want to have to do something in the wall and I'm trying to figure out what is it and asking him to describe it is ridiculous because words words are hard and apparently he can't say them so he can't really describe anything except for it sounds like the cats when they're playing well, that's not really a good description so it didn't it wasn't making noise all the time so I finally got to hear it enough times it sounded like there was a bird 
stuck in the interior walls of our house, how it would have gotten there. I have no idea, none whatsoever. So I'm going to show you what I had to do to try and figure out what was going on in our walls. Cut holes. I had to cut holes, people. Because I didn't know where it was in the wall exactly between which studs. <sighs> so the first cut that I made was about that big. And as you can see, I couldn't have planned it any better than smack dab centered in front of that stupid pipe. Smack dab. So I had to cut it a little bit bigger. So we shone a flashlight in there and we looked around. We really couldn't tell that there was anything in there. Plus about down to here somewhere, there's another pipe that runs horizontally. So we're like, well, if the bird got below that, I don't know, it might be able to get out. So because we couldn't see anything, I had to cut a second hole between some other studs. Now, nothing flew out of there immediately, or we didn't see anything. So we're not entirely sure if that did the trick. We haven't heard any more noise. I did save those pieces, so I will put those back. And since you can see this wall is a mess, and this is part of um, the walls that we're fixing, that I'm going to have to work on them anyway. So once we're done working, I will be able to patch those back up with the pieces that we cut out. And it'll look as good as new. So because nothing came out of there immediately, we opened his window, we had the door closed so the cats wouldn't be in here, and we just left it like that. And the next, I mean, it was probably at least a couple hours, and the next time he came in, I said, well, listen to see if you hear anything, if we've missed it, and it's in some other part of the walls, and he hasn't heard anything. So I'm really, really hopeful that that bird or whatever is either found another way out or it flew out of here. So it's been very busy around here. I have gotten a lot done on my stitching because I usually do that in the evenings and with being self-quarantined on top of it um, gives me a little bit more stitching time than maybe I had had before. Um, yesterday with all the yard work that I did, my back was killing me. I mean, it hurt so bad. Um, just, you know, the new start to the to the season and you're just not your body's not used to it yet so I took my aspirin and my heating pad and sat down and stitched last night for a good long time afterwards um but yeah I still got a long ways to go and um lots of stitching to work on we're gonna have a lot of time to do that I think that there's gonna be a lot less that people can talk about um, because they are stuck at home. So it's going to be whatever they are able to stitch on, which may be a lot. Maybe a lot. Um, I try not to do too much because it does start to hurt my shoulders and my back. I get that knot in my back in a certain spot when I stitch too much. Um, so with us staying safe and staying well, please keep in mind that not everything you hear is going to be accurate. Be very careful about who you're listening to, as well as how much you're listening to it. There are things like updates that I will um, find out about and listen to, but a lot of the other stuff, like the media hype and all the numbers that they're projecting and this and that, that I'm not listening to it. Because for one, it's not always accurate. And two, um, I've watched some little... Um, YouTube videos of doctors, well-known doctors, that are very, very mad at the media for what they're saying. So please be very careful about what you listen to. Um, we all know what we need to do. Wash our hands a lot. Stay safe, like being away from other people as much as possible. I know we probably have to go to the grocery store once in a while, but um, that's really all you need to know. That's all you need to know, um, unless there's other quarantines, but if we're already self-quarantining, then there isn't too much to hear. Um, but yeah, we, we need to be careful about how much we listen to. It's, I think it's 
it causes all that panic when it doesn't need to be there. Um, so yeah, with that, I am going to head out and do whatever I'm going to do for the day. Um, I'm not going to do yard work today because I need to give my back a break. Um, uh, maybe tomorrow I'll be able to get in there and get some more done. Um, obviously stitching later on, but maybe it's just things like working on my son's walls in his room. Um, how many of us are doing our deep cleaning, spring cleaning, because we have nothing else to do? Which isn't a bad thing. My windows really, really need to be washed. So maybe I'll get out there and do that. Um, it's been a beautiful week here in Oregon. Um, today is supposed to get up to like mid-60s. Very nice. So we're going to have a nice day today. And then Saturday and Sunday, it's supposed to still stay nice. But Monday, the rain's back like all week so I've got to get things I want done outdoors as much as I can get done I can't get it all done in two days but as much as I can get done I need to do it so I will stay busy all of us will I see a lot of people who are working on their outdoor stuff because they have nothing else to do as well so with that I will uh say goodbye and hopefully y'all are keeping yourself from going crazy <laughs> and having a good stitching time. So we'll see you next time. Bye.